Hi, my name is Gerald Slosher, and this is the Tradition Muscle Auto Lab FTT 1 to 30 customizing your fourth working. Um, I'm going to start out with when I first got everything, I unboxed it and was able to see that it was pretty, uh, pretty much just a rough piece of wood, a bunch of metal and unpolished brass that still had silk on it. So I uh, went and laid out all my parts, uh, put them where they should be. You know, down to where they were going to go in the wood and to the best of my ability, to the best of my knowledge. So after I was done laying out everything, I was started letting the percussion lock assembly, which was probably the hardest part for me because I've never done any type of inletting. And the wood I seen in this area seemed to be pretty soft and brittle. I actually started chipping some away with the chisels and that's why I ended up going and getting a... Uh, exacto knife and I, I found that to be a very very uh, useful tool in this in this setup so after we did that I did the primary cleanup of all my brass you know a lot of it still had uh, seams on it from being molded that way as it came from the place so I used you know the files I used uh, rotary tools I cleaned up a lot of the brass just primary cleaned it up not polishing yet that was a whole nother monster later so after that setup, I started inletting the butt plate and uh, drilling the holes and screws to get it put in place, which, uh, man, that was very trying. I had to use a lot of inletting black and a lot of trial and error. I went through that process. I, uh, I went in that back, the back, back of it, and tap it in there and cut away more wood. I mean, I did that process for hours, so that was, uh, one was pretty long and trying. Uh, I worked on that one until it was a good fit for both the toe plate and the butt plate, and then I drilled them in place so that uh, you know, I pre-drilled them, waxed the screws, put them in there, and it was good to go. It looked pretty good. Um, then I was doing the rear tremble, which was actually really hard because I didn't have a drill press, and I was having a hard time keeping it steady and going straight in. I actually had to drill it twice. So there's a, a phantom hole in my rear tremble, which doesn't cause any problems, thankfully. But um, So I clamped it down in, drilled through, and then the second time I got it right, I went through the brass and the wood, and I was able to screw it in and file down the screw a little bit so that uh, my rod would pass through easily. The next process I did was I installed the barrel tenons, which again was a process I've never tried before. And, with a hand drill, now a drill press was a little difficult, but I measured everything out, measured down on the wood, marked my wood, used a center punch, punched in the wood so that my drill didn't slip off to one side, and I drilled through the wood and the metal of the tenons at the same time so that they were a good fit. Um, actually came out pretty good. I was actually really impressed with this part. It did, I felt like it was pretty good. Um, then we went on to a front tremble install which was actually fairly easy because it had already been pre-drilled which I was very thankful for after doing the rear tremble this was actually a blessing so I measured my location on the wood and the brass I just drilled, drilled through and uh, it was that one was a pretty simple process so after that I started inletting installing the trigger assembly which uh, I feel like after doing the, the toe plate and the action that I, I'd start getting a lot better at this, and plus I was able to use the uh, exacto knife a lot more, so that made this process a lot easier. Um, so I was able to use it was the same as before with the inlining black, a lot of trial and error, but I just feel like this went a lot better for me. I was doing a lot better at this time. Uh, and the trigger guard, I was able to get the trigger guard in, mostly using the chisels on that. I, I felt like. Uh, I felt like I was starting to get a lot better use of the chisels and learning how to use them. Uh, and letting black laid it in there, trial and error again. But I, I mean, like I said, this one was, it was a lot better and easier this time than it was earlier in the process. Uh, now for the fun stuff, I started shaping the stock, the rear of the stock of the weapon. Um, I used my files, I used rafts, I used sandpaper, sandpaper sanding blocks. Uh, I actually used a uh, hand sander at, some, at one point, um, alternating 
sandpaper is going up in levels so that uh, my, my stock had a nice finished look smooth all the way down until it was flush with the metal of the uh, the brass plates so it, it came out really good um, I really like the way that part came out and then uh, yeah, that, that, that process did take a long time though many hours on that I start after this I started working on the breach area um, where the uh, muzzle and everything reaches um, and a depth flush on the rear of the barrel and the wood come together nice and flush the file down that was actually pretty simple um, then uh, I had to install my nose cap which uh, was the first time I've ever tried um, countersinking without a countersink tool so I was able to do that I got my tool my lines all centered up marked and centered and then uh use my center punch to mark it so I didn't have any drift on my drill and then I drilled my holes and then I used a much larger drill bit to uh, act as a countersink bit and I was able to uh, countersink those so they don't stick out too far I actually came out pretty good for the first time doing it I started sanding the front end of the stock pretty much the same way as the back end I didn't use the files or anything this time just used sanding blocks it was, it was actually pretty uh, pretty much shaped very well so I didn't have to do a whole lot I just started on a, a uh, rougher grit and worked my way up to a finer grit so that I had a nice uniform smooth finish next next I start preparing the wood uh, start wiping it with water and sanding it to raise the grain and I and once I had that done, sand it, raise the grain, sand it, raise the grain, nice smooth finish, and I didn't have the hair sticking up or anything like that. And I took a rag and I applied my stain to the weapon, and it actually came out pretty good. Um, next process was very time consuming. I think one of the most time consuming in the whole process was uh, polishing all the brass. I used Whole bunch of different processes in this. I used uh, files, I used sandpaper, I used rotary tools, I used my bench grinder. I mean, I sanded and brassoed and sanded and filed and brassoed. And yeah, it was a it was a lot of work. And I started when I applied Birchwood Casey's True Oil to my my stock. I think I put seven coats on. So what I would do is I'd prep the wood with triple uh, zero steel wood and rubbing it kind of like you would with the sandpaper just to prep the wood and then I would do a coat of uh, true oil and I'd go back over it with the steel wood, let it dry then go back over with the steel with another coat I think I did that six or seven times so I, I got a real nice high shine finish look pretty good um, my next step was I uh, I opened up the areas for the sides to be installed with my triangle needle files and then with a, a drip punch, punched them in just to make sure they were all right. Then I took them back out because I still needed to glue the barrel. So that was fairly easy. The next thing was prepping the barrel for to be glued. So I hung the barrel and uh, I inspected for any type of imperfections. I sanded it down with a real fine sandpaper, cleaned the barrel, and finished off the prep work with a, a triple O steel wool again. Then I uh, I got virtual Casey's gluing solution and put the solution on a rag and just started covering all the metal parts with it. Which actually, this step was really cool because I've never done it before. And uh, as soon as you put that chemical solution on the barrel, you're able to see the chemical process change. So I did that about three times, going through with the steel wool after each time, and then uh, going through each time. So it was it was actually really cool to watch that happen. I'm going to do that again on a couple other weapons that I've got. So now I, I started working on my final assembly, putting all the gun pieces together that I've been working on this whole time, which is really cool. I got to watch it all come together this time, finally.